Hey guys, welcome to a second video for RX480 overclocking uh, today with liquid nitrogen. Um, I'm actually at the house of Dan Kopp, who is also a very famous uh, extreme overclocker, currently number one ranked at HWBot, and he's also filming. Currently, he's holding the camera. So what we do today is uh, overclocking this card, um, the RX480. This is the same one I showed before for the uh, water overclocking. So today we will show you how we will uh, prepare the card for liquid nitrogen. So um, the is, um, insulation, then mounting the LN2 container, and then in general how we will treat the card on LN2. So here we have the card again. Uh, as you can see, I placed some uh, VRM coolers on there. Actually, it didn't really help that much. It's uh, about three to four degrees lower temperature than just putting a fan on here. Uh, so I still left it on there. It's not worse, so that's okay. Also here around um, the six pin PCI Express connector, you can see that I shorted those um, connectors here. Uh, actually, there was the input choke before, which is used as a filter inductor to filter the current which is coming from here. But it seemed like the inductor was not strong enough, so uh, it burned. So I had to remove it and short the trace here. Also, another modification I did is um, combining the rails from 6 pin and from PCI Express um, 12 volts. So here are some empty uh, pads normally and if you connect those two it's combining the 12 volt from the 6 pin and the 12 volt from the PCI Express connector just to make sure everything um, can be fully delivered to the VRMs without any limits. So this is Denkop, as I mentioned before, uh, extreme overclocker from Germany currently ranked number one on HWBot. Hey guys. So he's insulating the card now using uh, Vaseline and Vaseline is very useful because it's very easy to apply. You can get it everywhere, it's pretty cheap. And of course you can remove it without any residues, which is very helpful for us. So he's now spreading um, the Vaseline on the card just with a normal brush. And once he spread it all over the card, we will just melt it with a um, heat gun and then it will be perfectly insulated against water. So this is the Raptor 4 GPU container. I developed this piece of technique. It's um, actually made out of full copper. You can see inside um, there's a structure and we pour the LN2 inside here. And so the tr structure is for um, the very good uh, thermal transfer. You can see we will mount the GPU on here. Here's a temperature sensor and this is just for mounting the card. So. Uh Right here I'm using uh, Thermal Grizzly, like I always use for all my components like CPUs or GPUs. So mount, mount the GPU container. So we usually use a backplate made out of steel just to spread the mounting pressure to avoid any kind of VGA uh, problems. So this is how the card looks like after um, mounting the GPU container. Of course we will add a little bit of more paper towel later just to catch some drops and ice. But yeah, that's it for now and now we will mount the container and the card in the system. So this is how the setup looks like without the card. You can see we're using the Asus Rampage 5 Edition 10 as platform for our testing. We're also using the Core i7-6950X, which is also liquid nitrogen cooled. Of course, not yet, but that's the cooler, which is already mounted. And we now um, protected the board with some paper towel, uh, towel and will now plug in the card here. So we're again using the Elmore EVC software. You can see I adjusted it to 1.44 uh, volt and um, in real, it's 1.41 measured. You can also see the VRM temperature is really good now. It's around 58, 60 degrees on load. Um, mainly because we placed a fan on there, also have VRM coolers, and of course the cold PCB from the liquid nitrogen is helping. And we now fixed uh, the GPU clock to 1600 megahertz, which you can see here. It's um, running on load using the rendering. You can also see it here. And we will now try uh, 
some more fire strike and fire strike extreme. So in the end we achieved uh, 14,626 points on the normal fire strike and as you can see on the top left side we were able to run 1600 MHz on the GPU and 2300 MHz on the memory. Also the CPU was clocked constantly on 4.5 GHz. So you can see the graphics score is now over 16,000 and if you compare that to the stock of around 12,000 you have an increasement of 4,000 which is actually not really bad. So um, the only thing is that you cannot use this for 24-7 computing obviously. Also I have to point out that this result was done with everything stock in the driver. Um, tessellation was still enabled. Um, I also did the second result though with tessellation disabled for the HWBOT database. You can see the, the impact is uh, almost 1000 points so without tessellation I was able to get 15,389 points. Also this is a screenshot I did. Uh, you can see that the GPU was running at 1700 MHz here. You, could also, you can also see that we are actually running the render test. So the um, GPU was stable enough to handle it in t 2D and also during the render test. However, it was not stable enough uh, for the full 3D mic run. The main problem we had was that we could not run the GPU itself colder than 0 degrees. So whenever we went lower than 0 degrees on the, C on the GPU itself, the GPU would um, go into the power saving mode, which results in um, the PCI Express going from uh, 3.0 to 1.1. You can also see that in the screenshot here um, on, in the GPU Z. So whenever we went lower than zero degrees, we lost a lot of performance. So we could not really uh, clock the GPU that high, mainly because we did not have a LN2 BIOS at that point. Um, that leads me to the point that I actually have um, uh, Air OC BIOS for you guys so um, you can find the download link in the description and with that BIOS you are able to run up to 1.4 volt on the card even on air or water cooling and you can increase the TDP up to 225 watt. Um, please be aware obviously that 1.4 volt is still quite much um, so make sure your card is properly cooled don't use 1.4 volt with the stock cooler obviously. So let's talk quickly about the Elmore EVC software. Here's a screenshot I did for you guys. You can see the GPU was running at 1.45 volt roughly. This was done shortly, I mean the screenshot was taken shortly after um, the Firestrike Extreme run at 1600 megahertz. So you can actually see um, how the GPU acts between the tests like GT1, GT2 physics and combined tests. You can see the VRM temperature increasing um, until the end of the test. You can see the maximum um, VRM temperature was actually um, 87 degrees and the maximum uh, current draw from the GPU itself was 141.1 amps. So if you calculate that with the GPU voltage, that's up to 205 watt just the GPU itself and uh, not um, taking the memory into account. So probably if you um, put in the switching loss you have from the VRMs and also the memory, I guess you will have something between 250 and 300 watts um, going through the cards. So that's it for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this quick video about RX480 on LN2 and you had uh, a good insight on how it works, how we even overclock those cards. Unfortunately, we couldn't really push that much um, because we couldn't go that low in temperature. Um, however, I will get um, the RX480 Strix soon and whenever I have that card, I will keep you updated for sure about overclocking on air, water and LN2. So that's it for now. Um, I hope you have a very nice Friday evening. Uh, enjoy your weekend and see you soon.